Hey guys, I'm Gaspachian, and today we're going to showcase something that you could do with your stations around Minmus, but probably shouldn't. The answer to the why is that it's kind of a neat thing to do. The answer to the what is putting a station in orbit with a periapse of 6 meters. The trick here is to also make sure that the orbit you're in is a synchronous orbit. We're off by about 200 meters, but if you play around with this, you'll notice that it's nearly impossible to get any more precision than that. For one given semi-major axis, you have one orbital period. So you could have a semi-major axis and be perfectly circular, like if you had set your eccentricity to zero, you would have these values where you would have a peri and apo both at 357.941 kilometers. But as long as your semi-major axis remains the same, you will have the same orbital period. So what we have set up here is a highly elliptical orbit with the same semi-major axis as one perfectly circular with these parameters for Apo and Peri. Uh, as we come in here, you will notice that our periapse is above the Great Flats, and we have set up this orbit so that is always the case, because it is, again, synchronous. And our periapse, as you can see, is only about 600 centimeters. The question is how, how much deeper would you dare go with this? Um, as far as I understand the internal workings of KSP, the periapse here is the lowest altitude your center of mass is going to have. And our center of mass is right about here, I remember. But yeah, the result is that we have a stable orbit here with a very low periapse. Uh, we haven't reached the periapse yet, of course. We're, we're still seven seconds away from it. We're way above where our periapse is actually at. And yeah, you can see that if we had been aligned on the other axis, that would have been a crash, I think. So what could you do here? Well, you could also do um, a very simple EVA landing. I mean, uh, it is known commonly known, that uh, the RCS jetpack is enough to get you landed uh, on Minmus. But then, of course, you'd have to perform the orbital rendezvous and everything like that. Uh, with this orbit, there's very little of a rendezvous to perform, because uh, with the periaps passing over your head, like literally cutting your hair off, uh, you, you'd just have to match match the speed of it and you'd you'd be set is the theory so we're going to attempt a EVA only landing here and try to get up on the station next orbit around and I think now is probably a good time to start burning Twenty meters per second, fifteen, ten, five, four, three, two, one. There we go. And now the station is sort of like orbiting over here, I think. So we'll manually get ourselves off to here. I think that's good. And now we'll just wait one day down on the surface while well, we perform all of our experiments and whatnot, having a grand time doing it because Minmus is a wonderful place where magical things happen, such as a complete disregard for safety and uh, hijinks when it comes to orbital mechanics. And you can see because of the curvature of Minmus, it appears to be way below the ground when it's really just skimming the horizon here with a minimus periaps of four meters uh, just behind us and um, I think we burned with that having 40 or so seconds left to its peri 
So I think we should start our burn with that parameter being just about there as well. Maybe. Again, this is not something you usually do, so it's not something I care to memorize too clearly. Okay. Time to go. So we're going to give ourselves enough of an upward push as to not collide with the surface again. But other than that, we're just going to kill our relative velocity. Actually, we can do this backwards. Won't that be more visually descriptive? So that's all very exciting, right? But I was imposed a challenge when I stated this concept or whatever you'd call it uh, on Reddit. And the challenge came from Sackboy who said, uh, you have to try this then. Undock Bob from below a ground skimming ship with just enough anti-radial velocity to brush the surface. I'll allow a command seat with SAS and steel skis for the landing. Now uh, that sounds like a suicide mission and uh, Bob chickened out. He's in fact sitting on another craft in the save so he, he got got off scots free but uh, what we do have here so to answer sackboy's challenge i built a very basic ablative chair now uh, i have some sad news in that it doesn't quite work up to specs uh, taken out of context, it does fulfill the challenge that Sackboy imposed on it. Uh, but, but there are some issues with the speed. Let's see here. We're going to attempt to board this. And I have horrible depth perception if I'm looking at a 2D screen. Fancy that, right? So, with Bob absent, hiding away on some other ship in this sandbox uh, save, we're going to sacrifice two Kerbals to make up for it. Did I say sacrifice? Nah. That's not what I meant. I meant take them for a joyride. I mean, I'm sure they'll find it quite as joyful as the camera is finding things. So, this is the situation. We have the minimum station there. We have the lander here. We probably want to do this not in a fisheye config, but something like that. And then you angle yourself to whatever angle you think is great. And By the definition of the challenge, not stating anything about staying on the ground, but just performing a landing, and then sort of requesting implicitly, I guess, that the Kerbals do survive, I think I have achieved my goal. Sort of. I don't know. Also, we can see that that did slow down our orbital speed by about 3.3 meters per second. So, I mean, all, all you need to do to make this work properly is to build a bigger ablator. So I, I, that's, that's where we leave the challenge to anyone to pick up. Well, that's something you can do if you're ever around Minmus.